Hello, everyone. Welcome. Good afternoon. So if people would like to uh, type who they are and where they come from into the chat area, uh, we'll be starting uh, almost immediately. Uh, just wait for a few more people to, to come in. To see people joining at the moment. So I'm Gary Mottram and uh, I'm responsible for uh, managing uh, these events along with Steve. Uh, I kind of work in the background. Uh, Steve is in the background here. Steve Diop uh, from the British Council is working in the background uh, translating the uh, talk onto the Telegram group. So if people struggle with uh, the actual webinar, there's always a summary uh, produced in the Telegram group. So I'm going to get going because we only have the hour and uh, we've got a lot to cover. So uh, I welcome Abel Achika, who's going to uh, introduce himself, but he's going to be talking about uh, mobile apps for ELT in the Sub-Saharan in Sub-Saharan Africa. And this is, if you like, a follow up to Salome's uh, session. Uh, where she was talking about other forms of technology uh, within uh, the, the, the Sub-Saharan African context. So over to you, Abel. Thank you so much, Gary. I'm really pleased to be here today. I want to thank the British Council for all they do for, um, for English language teachers who are able to share their, their good practice, promote good practice, teaching practice in Africa and around the world. I'm also grateful to the support team from English Connect who've been so good. Um, they've helped us um, to put together our slides and uh, to make everything look very good. So I'm really grateful. My name is Abel Ochika and I'm a Nigerian and I I have a master's degree in English language and I have taught English language for about a decade now. And I am also in the ICT world, have been in information and communication technology for close to two decades as well. So today um, it's like one of those days where I have the opportunity to share things that I have learned um, over the years. And I'm really glad to be here. Most of the things I'll be sharing today are things I learned myself from personal um, efforts and also from you know, webinars like this. So I really feel very privileged to be here. And I can see many people from the chat um, all around the world. Uh, I can see people from Nigeria and um, Kenya and so on. Okay, I can hear that my audio isn't too loud. Um, okay, can you hear me now? How about now? Is it much better? It's, Is it much it's, better now? It's okay for okay. me, but... Uh, okay, okay, okay. Thank you better, so much. That's better, so yeah. I think we would just... Okay, good. So thank you very much. Please, if you can't hear me, you can type in the chat box. I would readjust my audio. Thank you. So um, today, the topic we'll be looking at is maximizing... Uh, mobile apps for ELT settings in Africa, Sub-Saharan Africa. And um, I have an agenda for today. Um, the next slide, please. I have an agenda for today and what I'll be doing uh, at the initial point, I'll be looking at ELT settings in Sub-Saharan Africa, um, smartphones, mobile apps. And then I would look at some of the um, apps that we use pre-lesson, during the lesson or lecture period in class, and then post-lesson as well. So uh, it will be really uh, good to hear what you think about what we're discussing, and I'll be glad to share some of your experiences. So um, you can type in the chat what you think about some of the concerns about ELT settings in um, Afri Sub-Saharan Africa. As an English language teacher, what are some of the, the concerns that you have um, about classrooms, 
about your job. Um, can we hear some of your concerns? You can just type in the chat quickly so we see um, what, what is going on in your context. Um, are you enjoying your, your job as a teacher? Um, and so on. So what are some of your concerns? Can you share in the chat? Uh, to be glad, uh, I'll be very glad to read some of your comments and um, see if it aligns with some of the things that we have um, ready for today. What are some of your concerns in your ELT contexts? By the way, ELT means English language teaching. So I believe that most of us here are English language teachers. So I'll be glad to see some of your concerns. Um, I'm still waiting in the chat room to see large classrooms. Yes, thank you, Ayo. Large classrooms, that's a major concern, yeah? Has to do with infrastructure. Teachers' competence and economic constraints, yeah? Yes, boy, that, I, I agree. Poor network, yeah. Large, large classrooms, yeah, I know. Some of us have over 200 students in one class. And that could be challenging, yeah? Yes, Nina, large classrooms. It appears everyone is saying large classrooms today. I teach adults, okay, the main concern is the absence. Okay, translation to native, beautiful. Yes. Okay, thank you very much for your comments. Please keep them coming. Afterwards, we would collate all your, your comments and see how we can um, profile solutions to them if we, if we unpreparedness of students, yeah, very good, thank you. So let's look at the next slide and see some of the things that um, our friend Chad GPT thinks about um, the concerns in Sub-Saharan Africa. So I asked my friend Chad GPT to tell me some of the concerns that uh, we have in uh, Sub-Saharan Africa. And here's a list that we have, infrastructure, access to quality education, um, access to education itself, teacher shortages, poverty, uh, gender inequality, and so on and so forth. And I asked, what can we do about it? And this is what ChatGPT said, invest in infrastructure, uh, increase access, improve teacher training, curriculum enhancement, address poverty, promote gender inequality, and so on and so forth. Now, these are ideas that ChatGPT has provided. And think about it. What can you do? What can you do about these concerns? So what I'm trying to do now is to do some advocacy for um, you know, making the system better. And thanks to British Council, we are enjoying something about teacher training now. Um, this series that we've had for uh, a while now on ICT is another intervention by uh, British Council in collaboration with teacher associations. So you in your little corner, you're doing something and that's why you're here on this platform today to learn a thing or two about maximizing mobile apps for um, ELT context. So, um, Kudos to everyone who has joined in or who will watch the video afterwards. Um, you are developing and you are helping um, teaching in Sub-Saharan Africa. And we, we pray that as you continue in these efforts, things will get better in your context. Now, there's something again that I would like us to see um, about the context that we are talking about today, the Sub-Saharan Africa, and that will be in the, uh, in the area of statistics. So can we go to the next slide? Let's talk about the statistics that we have um, about the usage of mobile phones. Um, here is a statistical record published um, in 2023 by um, one of the leading um, mobile phones and mobile um, systems in, in Africa. Uh, called GSM, um, let me get the name now, um, GSM, okay, um, Global Systems for Mobile Communications, GS, 
GMSA in 2023. Now, these um, statistics that we can see on the screen shows that we have many mobile phones or people have access to the internet now in Nigeria, South Africa, Egypt, Kenya, Ethiopia, and some other sub-Saharan African countries. What this means to us is that um, the narrative is not as gloomy as many of us think that um, people are not connected via the internet. People are getting connected and um, they also project that in, by 2025, over 615 um, million um, people will have been connected to the internet and about 75% of that number will be on uh, to be on the internet using smartphones or enable, internet enabled devices. So it's not really a gloomy situation. Um, things are changing. And I'm sure if I inquire from you, um, you will tell me some things about the, the nature of your um, teaching context. So now we would like to share a poll with you like you to tell us what you what you think um, about these questions and this would help us to kick start the conversation for today um, is our poll ready gary do we have our poll ready yes so here's the poll um, as an english teacher do you make use of mobile devices in the classroom okay no, this is the second poll we're supposed to be having the first one but it's fine, um, you can answer these ones and then you can answer the first one as well um, when it is done. Um, I can see the responses coming up. Um, as a teacher, do you make use of mobile phones, mobile devices in the classroom? And I can see um, the answers are interestingly um, in the affirmative. The second question, um, are your students allowed to use mobile phones in your school classroom? And we can see, um, we're seeing more answers, no, 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 no. So, all right, okay. Can we have the first one? Can we have the first poll? Can we have the first poll, Gary? Yes. Gary, shall I come in? Okay. The first poll. Okay, okay, let me, let me, let me just see where I can go. Mm. Uh, well, uh, okay, yeah, this is the poll I, wa I, I wanted us to look at. What device are you using to connect to this webinar? Um, Android, an iPhone. Um, okay. Android. Yes. Oh, can, okay. I see someone has a, a hot mic. Can you just respond to the poll in the chat? Um, that will suffice. Um, so we can see that many of us are using our Android phones to connect um, the chat. And um, how many smartphone phones have you got? Okay. Some are saying one, two, one, two. All right. Okay, beautiful. Thank you very much for responding to our poll. So can we share? Uh, can we share the results of the poll? Let's see what we've got. Um, we see that many people have answered. So let's share the results of the first poll and then move on to the other aspects of our uh, webinar. Um, can you can you see the results? Um, I can I can I cannot see the results. Okay. Um, 
okay, you can share yeah, the results. Share the results. Okay. We can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can so see the results. Okay, so so eighty three percent answered. Uh, so thirty three people said that they uh shared the device that they use. Uh, they so you have twenty six out of thirty one using Android, and then five oh. using iPhone. Oh. Um, let's see details. Okay. Okay. Did you get that okay? Yes, that's fine. That's fine. Let's let's move. We can move to the next the next slide. And thank you everyone for responding to the poll. Um, okay, I think we can just move to um, the next. Good. So can you type? Um, in the chat, what you know about smartphones. I know you're using one already, uh, but let's know how well you know your smartphone. What do you know about smartphones? What information do you have about smartphones? What information do you have about smartphones? What do you know about smartphones? I'm waiting in the chat to see what you have to say about smartphones. I know you're already using one, and I know you're knowledgeable about smartphones, but let's know what. Yes, connects to the net. I like that. Uh... <laughs> the average, I I only think that well, he read somewhere that um, the average smartphone is more powerful than the rocket ship sent out out of space. I think that's a very good comment. Yeah, they are agile and can help automate many services, act as prompts to, yes, facilitate communication and learning, or smartphones. Yes, smartphones have the internet access, more or less my pocket office, research, communication, I agree, John. I agree, everything is possible these days. Smartphones is a great source of knowledge to me. Beautiful. Mini computer, I like that. It helps in communication, Mary. Thank you. Um, communication, um, using different app for different purposes. Thank you. Great comments. And I'm happy that we know a thing or two about our smartphones. Next slide, please. The next slide, please. Okay, so the smartphone actually, um, the this, this slide before this one, please. The smartphone is actually a combination of two technologies. One, the cellular mobile, which connects you to the internet, and then the handheld um, computer, like a laptop, that you can use in, you know, on sitting down or seated in one spot. So the technology of these two um, um, devices is what has given birth to the smartphone. And I'm sure many of you are aware, um, you have your Android and then you have your iPhones. And these two, these two uh, major platforms that you know give us this wonderful technology which is a smartphone is what many of us use today to solve many many problems and it can serve like many of you have said as a personal um, computer you can use it anywhere you find yourself even though the screen is kind of limited but these days we have um, audio um, recording uh, and uh, you have voice recognition that can help you to even type or you know key in messages without necessarily using your, your telephone to do all that. So, so what we have today is a very powerful device that we can use to solve many problems. For some of us, our devotionals are on our smartphones, 
our calendars on our smartphones, our lecture notes on our smartphones. There's so much that we, we can do uh, with our smartphones. And there are so many things that we cannot do these days without our smartphones. So um, many of us are so addicted to it that every moment you want to just pop, just to check to be sure that something has not popped up or, popped up on your smartphone. So um, it's really a device that everybody is interested in. The next slide, please. Now, here is some things you need to know about your smartphone. Um, it's got the input um, aspect where things come into your phone. We're going to be looking at that much later. The touch screen, um, physical buttons, virtual keyboard, the camera, and the microphone is how information comes into your smartphone. And then output when you want to um, see the things that are in your smartphone, um, the screen display, the LED indicator for uh, the lights behind your phone, the phone jack ports, Bluetooth wireless and charging port. These are all output segments of your smartphone. The next slide, please. Now, here are some useful maintenance tips for your smartphone. And I think everyone should take advantage of this information because it will help your smartphone to to perform optimally. First is the, up, the update soft, software. You need to update your software as often as possible. And you've got two major aspects of your software you know, on your smartphone. You've got the, the operating system software. You've got to always update it because sometimes um, some of these security patches are attached to the phone um, software and it helps to optimize productivity for your smartphone. You also have to back, back up your data as often as possible, either on the cloud or on your... Um, right, you can lose, um, you can misplace your smartphone, it can be stolen. But if your data is backed up properly, you'd always have access to your, your information. And then of course, you've got to manage your storage how do you do that? You delete unnecessary files. Um, sometimes some, um, some unwanted files are on your phone, some unwanted apps are on your mobile phone. You have to find a way to uninstall some of those apps so that as, all, as, as frequently as possible, you, you have enough space to do a, a lot of things so that your smartphone can operate smoothly. Now, to optimize your battery life, um, you've got to adjust your screen so that it doesn't, it's not consuming your battery. And then you can also use um, the power saving mode to always close all the background apps that are running on your mobile phone so your battery life can also um, last long. And please, whenever you charge your phones, please do not, do not use it while charging because if you do that, it also um, destroys your, the battery life of your phone. Do I need to tell you to protect your screen? Please protect your screen with um, a, a harder uh, phone case so that you can prevent it from damage. Uh, these days, some smartphones, the, the cost of the screen is, is as well the cost of the entire smartphone. So you don't want to um, uh, miss your spend so much because you are trying to uh, maybe I don't know what you're trying to do not protecting the screens of your phones. Please always protect the screen of your phone with a screen guard or with a harder or sturdy phone case. Then, of course, app management um, permission. You always make sure you know what app is permitting what, what information to go out of your phone because some apps are designed to steal data. So they have all these uh, malware waiting just to get data from your phone. So always check and be sure that the permissions are right for um, the apps that get information from your phone. Yes, you can also secure your, your phone with um, passwords. Um, and yes, don't overcharge your batteries. Don't overcharge your batteries. Ensure that your batteries are, 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 are charged appropriately some phones, there's a specification for how long you can connect it to a battery charge, uh, charging device. 
or electricity, and so on and so forth. Um, these are some of the tips I think you should know about your smartphone. And if you take these things very seriously, it's going to help you to protect your smartphone and to have it always available for you to use. Can we go on to the next slide, please? Now we're going to be talking about mobile apps. What about mobile apps are we going to be talking about? Well, let's, I think, um, can we display the answer to this poll? Um, or I think we've, we've, got, we've done it already about mobile apps. So let's go on to talk about mobile apps. And, um, or should we display the answer to this poll again? Maybe that will help to put this conversation in, in proper context. The second poll, can we display the results? Yes, I can see the results. As a teacher, do you make use of mobile devices in your classroom? And I can see what we have here. The answer is um, almost 79% um, um, say yes. You use your mobile phone, your device in your classroom. Wow. So this is a good webinar for everyone who's here. So you'll learn a thing or two about using mobile devices in a classroom and the apps that you use. And I'm sure you would want to share some of the information you've got about uh, mobile apps in your classroom. And then we've got another one, are students allowed to use mobile phones in your a, in a, in a school or a classroom? And the answer, the, what we have here is an overwhelming no, 76%. And that's something I think we should start thinking about um, after today. Um, all right, we can stop sharing this slide now and move to the next point. Um, the next slide, please. What are mobile apps? Well, a mobile app is a software application designed to run a smart to, to run on smartphones, tablets, or other mobile devices providing specific functionalities for users, often through a user-friendly interface. And that's what mobile apps are. And we have a galaxy, millions of mobile apps, you know, being produced every, every day and every minute of, of the day. And you can find these mobile apps on um, Google Play Store, or App Store if you're using an iPhone. And these days, um, most companies have, you know, the, the opportunity to sell um, both the web app, web enabled app applications and the ones that are not even web enabled. Some are designed to just get data from you and then they use it to uh, make you feel happy. Some of them have AI, um, algorithms attached to them such that they control everything that you do or they want to be sure they know what you're doing part time. So um, we've got so many mobile phones available, uh, sorry, mobile apps available for you to download and use on your phone. Now, all you need to do is just think about a problem. You think about a problem and you just go online and look for solutions that an app can provide for you. And there are many um, app de developers who are also looking for ideas. So if you find an app developer, most times they will ask you for ideas on what problems, what challenges you are facing that a, a phone or a smartphone can solve and they develop an app to solve that problem. Today, we're going to be looking at mobile apps and um, we have divided or categorize the mobile apps into three main segments. The first one will be um, the apps that you use before your lesson or your class when you're you preparing for a lesson. And then the second is the mobile apps you use while in class. And then afterwards, when you're done with your lecture for the day or your lesson for the day, what are some of the mobile apps that you use? All right, so um, the next slide, please. Next slide, please. Okay. Here are some um, interesting apps that you can use before your lesson. Could you type in the chat um, what other apps you use before 
your lesson, while you're preparing for your lesson. Other than these ones that I have I highlighted here that are just on the screen, um, could you type in the chat some mobile apps that you use while preparing for your lecture? Pinterest, yes, thank you very much. Pinterest is a very good mobile app. Bard, yes, it's an AI app that is really good. <laughs> it's good, it helps. Google Classroom, whoa, why do you prepare for your class? That's good. AI, YouTube, yes. Um, okay. All right, WPS, YouTube. Yeah, I can see another person has typed in YouTube. Uh, I think I can tell why you use YouTube. Google Scholar, hmm, I see. AI app, yes, YouTube, YouTube. You see, wow, it's good. All right, thank you so much for your inputs. And um, it's good to know that we are using mobile apps while we prepare for our lessons for the day. And that's very important because these apps help us to have a solid um, class um, participation. At least we are prepared for our lecture for the day if we you know, use some of these apps in preparation. Now, we're going to be looking at um, some apps that are Google-based, uh, Google apps, we call them um, apps pr pr produced by the Google um, company. And why not? Because um, some of these apps are free. In fact, for Google, if not all the apps, we can use them for free. And they are really great applications and I'm hoping that by the end of this, um, this webinar, you'll find it very useful to maximize you know, the free applications because some of these applications, you've got to pay, uh, you've got to register. Some of them are highly restricted. So for that purpose, um, it's better you start with the free ones and that, that will help you to understand how um, you, know, um, you could use mobile apps to make life easier for you as an English language teacher. So um, some of the free Google apps that we have are the Google Lens, Google Calendar, Google Sheets, Google Docs, uh, Google Forms, Google Drive, Google Meet, Google Classroom. And these are all free apps that uh, we can use. So um, the next slide, please. And I would like you to say this um, with all sense of sincerity. How many of these um, Google apps do you use? Are you familiar with or, um, and why? Why do you use these apps? I'd like to see in the chat box what um, you use these free mobile apps for and um, why. If you can, um, just pop in the chat, uh, just type in the chat what you think about um, the free Google apps which ones are you familiar with? Which ones um, do you use? Um, on your screen, you can see um, the Google search engine. You can see Gmail. You can see Google Map, YouTube, um, Drive, um, YouTube Music. Um, you've got uh, the photo uh, app. And then you've got files, calendar, and so on and so forth. So I can see in the chat, um, I use Google Lens helps me scan directions, maps. Yes, um, I, yes, familiar with, okay. Yeah, familiar with Meet and uh, Maps, good, good. YouTube, Gmail, Calendar, Gmail, awesome. So. Let's go to the next slide. And I'll just say a little thing about the um, Google Calendar. On your screen, for those who can see it, um, I know it's quite tiny, but I'm sure afterwards would want to do another proper demo for those who would like to know how to use the Google Calendar. Now, the Google Calendar is one of those um, apps that helps to organize your day, your month, your week, your year. 
before you enter, before you even begin a semester, it's good you use a Google Calendar to plan the things that you want to do for the period. Now, if you look at the arrows um, pointing to your Google Calendar, these are all parts of your Google Calendar. Uh, if you see the icon, it's, it's that icon that looks, there's usually 31 written on it, so you can't miss it. Um, that's the, the, um, the app, the icon of the app. And it helps you to organize your time and your day. And it gives you so much opportunity to make life easier for yourself because you can also um, add new activities. You can set a timer to remind you of when the activity is going to take place. And if the activity will be repeated weekly, you can see um, just on your screen where it says do not repeat. All you need to do is to click on it and it will tell you either to repeat or do not repeat. So every, every other week you have this activity and it keeps reminding you. So if you have a class, um, it's good. If you have a lecture, it's good. You, you have all those things on your Google Calendar to remind you of how to use um, or maximize your time while in class. Um, it's also a device that you can use to um, keep record of other things, other events um, about your life, professional development like we are having now the, this webinar, or you have a conference that will be in about a few weeks or a few months, and um, it has a way of making um, life easier for you um, to manage your time wisely. So if you have not used, or if you have not been using your um, Google Calendar, this is a good time to activate it and begin to plan your events, your activities for the day, for the week, for the month, for the semester. And it will help you to you know, become more organized. And it reminds you of everything that you need to do. I mean, being an English teacher is really tough because there's a lot you need to do. You need to assess your students. You need to, you know, you have your private life. You've got professional development activities that you need to be part of. So these are things that you should think of maximizing. Let's look at the next one, which is the Google Lens. Um, the next slide, the next slide please. The Google Lens is an image recognition technology. Now, funny enough, this particular utility AI driven application is free and what you can use it to do is mind-boggling it's mind-blowing so while in class um, before your lecture after your lecture this is one app that you should um, begin to use if you don't have it on your mobile device you can just go to google play store and download it I have just a few demonstrations about how this app application works. Now, if you have it on your device, all you need to do is to use your, the camera on your phone and point to an image, to anything at all, and select from the base um, what you want it to do. It, it can help you to translate from one language to another automatically in real time. Um, it can also help you to get more information about anything you're looking for. Um, and this is how it is really profitable for you when you're preparing for your, your class. There's something you don't know about or you want to know more about, all you need to do is just um, use your the camera on your phone and point at it and it gives you instant information. Mind you, this works with the internet. So if you've not got internet, it might not work, but it, it helps a lot um, in helping you to find vocabulary um, for your students, new words that you want them to talk about just by you know, pointing a camera at something that gives you uh, detailed information. 
It also helps in immersion. If you want to immerse, you want to want your students to be immersed in a particular language. Uh, for those who uh, would like to um, teach in multilingual you know, environment, you find this app very useful. Can we go to the next slide um, that, that talks more about how to use the Google Lens and um, the other things that you can you know, benefit from it? So this particular one is my favorite about Google Lens. Have you thought about um, converting an image to text? Um, we call it the um, optical character recognition, OCR, where an image is transformed into a digital um, editable format. And this Google Lens can help you do that. So you, ha you, have, you have something, if you see in the demonstration, you have something that is written, you know, hand is handwritten, and you want to convert it into an editable text. All you do is you point the camera to it, activate the text um, part of, sorry, you have left the slide. Can you come back to the slide? Just so that they can see the demonstration. So all you do is you connect the device using um, your, your camera, you point at it, and then it highlights all the, the things that you need. Um, you, you select everything, you copy it, and then you paste on an editable, um, editable word processing app. WPS can do that, your Google Doc can also do that. And you can edit that particular text to any, any way you want it. So if you're considering transforming um, a hard copy um, material into a digitalized format, this is your, <coughs> excuse me, this is your go-to um, app and it's free. That's beautiful. So um, yes, John Akila, I like that. Google, <laughs> Google Lens saving life since 19, oh, oh, that's funny. Thank you. Excuse me. So let's go to the next slide that talks about um, that talks about um, translation. Sorry, I need to take some water. All right. So while I was preparing for this webinar. I thought about it, <coughs> excuse me. How do you translate a language you have not seen before? And you, this can help you while in class. So you see a language, maybe a student is trying to understand something, he can't communicate in English, but he can communicate in his local language, his mother tongue. And all you need to do is have him write or you see that kind of text, all you need to do is put your camera on that text in a language that you do not know, and it changes the language into English language that you can read. It's like a zoom lens that you place on something and it transforms it into what you want. It's a device that you should have um, it's an, a technology that you should have on your mobile on your mobile phones and use. You can use it before your class, during your class, after your class, and um, you can translate anything in a multilingual setting. So let's go to the next slide. Let's talk about some apps that you use while in class. What are some of the apps you use while in class? Well. Um, Thank you for your question, Ayo. I, I would respond to that perhaps maybe after, after the webinar and maybe in our um, group so, um, social media platform, we'll respond to that question that has just popped in. All right, there's something about apps that you use um, in class in the classroom. For you as a teacher, I'm sure some of these apps that you can see on your screen are things that you we are well aware of um, the Mentimeter for those of us who do a lot of 
um, online Google Classroom teaching is good. Google Translator is also very good. If you use it, it helps you a lot. And then the VLC player is that um, um, utility player that you can use to play downloaded videos or audios in your class in case you want to teach um, listening um, comprehension. Uh, you play it on your device. Salome gave us a fantastic webinar last a fortnight uh, ago about using ICT devices. And you can use your VLC player to play virtually any anything that you that is in a multimedia form. And then the stopwatch is that one that you can also use, I mean, in your class um, to time activities. You need to keep you need to keep um, keep the time in everything that you do in your classroom. So the stopwatch would really help you to manage time in your classroom. What about dictionaries? In an English language class, your students should have the leverage of connecting to a, maybe either an online dictionary or an offline dictionary whenever you're discussing a word or you want them to learn some things about lifelong learning. And this, is, this also takes me to one very interesting thing that happens in my classroom um, whenever I teach. Please go to the next slide. Um, in my classroom, many times I allow my students at specific times to connect to the connect to their mobile phones. I know, I mean, because I have very large classrooms, um, so because of that, sometimes it's even difficult to know who is using a smartphone or not in a class. So since you can't really control them, um, all you can do is to make them use it constructively while in class. So while they are using it constructively, you go around and be sure that they are you know, connecting to their phones and they're using it to learn one or, one or two things. As a matter of fact, there was a day I was in class and I told them to use open AI to look at some some things on their phones and some of them connected to WhatsApp and I was so mad. Why are you connecting to WhatsApp? And they said, well, they have an AI on their WhatsApp that gives them information about you know, anything they want to learn. So it's amazing how you can use your smart, your mobile apps in class. You can encourage your students. Of, of course, you control and make sure that you don't abuse the opportunity, but always try as much as possible to give them um, a good time um, while they are in class teaching, or while they're in class learning, and you are also teaching and facilitating their learning process. Now, the Google Forms is one free app that you can use to assess your students. Please, next slide. You can use this mobile, you can use this to assess your students. Sorry, the next one, Google Translate, we've talked about it. Let's talk about Google Forms. Um, so you can use it for assessment. And it's very easy. All you need is to um, type, um, forms.google.com and it automatically displays um, this, um, what you can, what, please move to the next slide. Move to the next slide. Let's talk about Google Forms quickly before our time goes off. The next slide is good, thank you. So for assessment, you can use Google Forms to assess your students. You can type in a short quiz, or a test. Um, I, I love to do formative assessment. So every time I connect to, um, to my students, when I engage them, I always want to have a feedback if they are following what we are doing in class. And the easiest way to do that is to give them a test. And the test helps me to know if I need to reinforce specific areas of their learning. So to create a, a Google form, all you need to do is go to forms.google.com. Um, there are many templates that you can click on. Um, here we have assessment. Um, uh, you, you go to new, create the folder, you create the form, and you can go ahead to help your students to 
um, learn and to know more about you know what you have taught them by just assessing them and knowing if they are following. Um, would, I'll give you a proper demo, maybe a short video um, when we connect in the Telegram group. I'm sure Gary will, will share the link now um, for those who would want to maximize Google Forms for assessing their students and to be sure that their students are following, especially if you're like me, who likes to do um, formative assessment. So after every class, I have something to um, connect with my students to be sure that they are following what um, we are doing in class. So you could have access to these slides so that you can follow step by step. Uh, alternatively, please use the, the link that Gary has just posted to connect to the Telegram group. And uh, on Friday, we're going to be discussing um, some of these applications in case you need a clinic. You just want to be sure that you're doing the right thing. I will show you how to use some of these applications to make your classroom um, engagement effective and efficient. The last uh, aspect of our conversation today is the post um, lesson applications. You can move to the next slide um, that talks about post lesson applications. Um, I'm sure some of you would like to re relax afterwards. Um, so after, after your lecture, after your class for the day, you want to relax. Sometimes all you need is social media. I can see so many social media applications. Please move to the next slide on that talks about some post lesson apps. Very good. Thank you very much. Yes. So post lesson applications, you can always um, connect with your students on social media. You can also connect with your friends and colleagues on social media and it helps you to relax and to connect with other people around the world. Duolingo is also another very important application that you can use to learn language you know, in a structured manner, and that can also help you in teaching English language in a structured manner. Um, the next, up, the next um, slide, please. Next slide, please. Yes, the next slide is on Google Drive. Sometimes you need to store your um, materials, documents on Google Drive, and these these um, will help you to keep tabs on all the things that you have, your information, your data. It keeps everything for you in a cloud. How to how how to get access to your Google Drive? There are some nine dots um, beside your uh, logging. Um, profile on, on Google, click on it, it will open um, this, what you can see here as a drop-down menu and gives you access to your drive and you can create a new drive that will help you to store information. And you have up to 15 gigabytes of free space to store anything, videos, pictures, documents, and so on and so forth. So maximize the Google Drive to store information that you can retrieve anywhere in the world. Um, all you need is just a login um, detail. And for you to log into um, Google, to have a Google account, it's free. So um, I would enjoin you to have a, a, a Gmail account so that you can maximize um, your Google Drive for um, getting your information afterwards. The next slide, please. Gains of mobile apps for ELT. It's accessible to all learners. Anybody who wants to learn, um, you can have access to um, applications that will help you to make life easier for you, to make your interaction with your students better. And then of course, it's interactive and engaging. Um, there are so many applications that we didn't even talk about today. The Jamboard, for example, Zoom, um, we're using Zoom now for interaction. It's a mobile app, you can use it. And then we have also cost-effective and um, scalable um, gains. It's cost-effective to use your app to solve many problems. Imagine what you would have done typing for, for a long time, and all you need to do is just scan, and it becomes digital. And then, of course, you can personalize your learning, can make learning even 
in the learning experience more personal and it helps everybody, both students and teachers, to sit on, on the front seat when it comes to interaction. They can interact face to face. Um, I'll be glad to take your questions now, even though we are really running short of time. But like I said earlier, and I think um, um, Gary has posted in the chat box um, that you can join. Um, you can join in our um, Telegram group, um, we can, where we have these conversations every week. Um, so I'll be glad to to take your questions now, or we can answer some of those questions in the chat in in the Telegram Telegram group. I know that we've got um, challenges. Many of us in our schools, students are not allowed to use smartphones. And that's quite a challenge, but we can surmount it um, if policymakers understand how how important um, or how people can learn to use this thing. Um, I'm sure they can then be tied. And then we also have to teach our students to be honest and teach them virtue on how to go about these things. Um, yes, there's a way you can project your phones. Yes, please. Yeah, just this, there's an interesting question there. I mean, we don't really have time to, yes. to do much, but but as Abel is saying, uh, you can join us next week or you can join us now on, on the Telegram group. So I put yes. links in, into the chat. Yeah. But there is a, a question there from Fozia yeah. uh, about a great, you're telling us mm. the different opportunities technology has brought into ELT. My concern is how do you translate all the facts you've told us in African classrooms? with all the contextual constraints we're having. So it's the same, it's a kind of common question, but maybe we can, you know, we can look at that. Yeah. Salome, uh, if, if you haven't seen it, uh, uh, Salome's uh, presentation mm. last week was, was a very good example of, of how you begin yeah. to sort of rethink technology in, in a low resource context. So have a look at that mm. and then come along. Yes. On Friday, or start asking questions immediately on on the Telegram group, and we can start sort of looking at that issue because it's a very important issue. But it's an yeah. issue that uh, I think people like yeah. Abel and Salome and other colleagues, another mm. a number of other colleagues, they're also addressing that kind of mm. issue around the sub-Saharan African, uh, you know, context. Yeah. So we can have a yeah. great debate about it. So. There yeah. are 14 new messages, mostly saying how good your presentation is, which I agree with. It was a very good presentation. Oh, thank you. I'm, I'm flattered. Thank you so much. 